Hallelujah. It's a joy again for us to share the Lord's table. As I've always said in this broadcast, it is not my table, but the Lord's table. And because it is the Lord's table, you are entitled to sit. Because a table has been prepared for you and I. As my son will preach, he said, Jesus has said, table for two. When a table is set for two of you, you and your husband or you and your friend, when you are at table, you don't look here and there. You look straight to the eyes of the person that has invited you to the table. That is what we are doing today. I am inviting you to the table of the Lord. And I want you to sit down and look straight to Jesus' eyes. Because he is inviting you to the table. And I said here before that having Holy Communion is a commandment. It is a command from God. It is a rule for, from God for us to celebrate with him, to celebrate him, and to celebrate one another. I am glad today that another opportunity has come for us to sit down on the table with Jesus himself, Jesus himself that died at the cross of Calvary, Jesus himself that poured his blood out for you and I, for the remission of sin, for the remission of anything that is contrary to our lives. Jesus poured his blood, poured his life, for us all. That is the joy of Holy Communion, that you are attesting to the fact that Jesus himself poured his life out, poured his blood out for you and I, for the remission of our sin. If we had our sin on the inside of us or in us up to tomorrow, then there will have been no reason for him to die. But while we were yet sinners, oh, I love this. While we were yet sinners, he made his choice to come and die for you and I. While we were doing our own things, while we were wallowing in sin, he made a determination to the Father and said, Father, I will go for you. I will go and reconcile man back to you. That is the essence of the Holy Communion. For you to celebrate, to say, Father, I thank you for dying for me at the cross of, of Calvary. The Bible said in John 1, 14, it says here, and the world became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we have seen his glory. The glory as the only begotten son from the father of grace and truth. Let me read it again for you. He said, and the word, the word of God, this word became flesh. You know, the Bible said the word of God is Christ. And for Christ to have come to dwell amongst us, he has to become flesh. And so the Bible says here, and the word of God became flesh, 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 and came amongst us. Because we needed to see his glory. And because he became flesh, he was able to die at the cross of Calvary for you and I. Today we celebrate. Today we rejoice. Today we see that Christ has been revealed on the inside of us 
to our world. And this gives you an opportunity. If you have never given your life to Christ before, this is an opportunity for you. I've just said Christ died. He came. He took away your sin. He took away your diseases. He took away everything. The contrary thing that were written against you on the wall. He took all away and set you free. That's all you need. All you need to say is, Father, I thank you that you died at the cross of Calvary for me. I thank you. You took away my sin. You took away my, my sicknesses. You took away my sorrow. You took away my grief. You took away everything that was against me, and you gave me your life. That doesn't mean that because we have given our lives to Christ, we don't pass through challenges. Yes, we do. But when we pass through challenges, deep down the inside of us, we know that there is a Father, there is a God, there is Jesus Christ, there is the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of us that gives us comfort. And that is what Christ came to do for us at the cross of Calvary. And he said before he left in Luke 22, 19, at the bottom of that verse 19, he called them together and he blessed them. And the Bible said he gave thanks and did others. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. So we are doing this. It's a celebration. It's for us to rejoice, is for us to eat his body, is for us to drink his blood, but more importantly, he said, do this in remembrance of me. So we are doing this in remembrance of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. I Me, mean, I can talk for a whole day. If I want to remember that which Jesus did for me at the cross of Calvary, I guess it's the same thing with you. Because a lot of things that he did at the cross of Calvary for you and for me, we cannot quantify it because of what he did for us at the cross of Calvary. He died at the cross of Calvary. He bled and died. He took away our sins. He took away our sorrows. He took away our sicknesses. He took away, Isaiah says, by his stripes, we were healed. We were healed. In other words, healing came before disease. Can you fathom that? By my stripes, ye were healed. I think where is, is past tense. If we were healed and sickness is here now, we have every right to say, Father, by your stripes, we were healed. You know, healing is the children's bread. Hallelujah. Healing is the children's bread. And every child of God has the right to tap at the healing of God. And he will not deny you. That is why we are taking this Holy Communion. The Bible said, And when he has gathered his own together, he took bread and took wine. And blessed it and said, hey, take, eat. It's, it, it baffles my imagination that the bread that is just ordinary bread, just this one. And then the wine, the fruit wine, the fruit juice. You know, it is just... Symbols, these are symbols. But when you take them in faith and you believe that you are taking these symbols, when it gets to the inside of you, 
it becomes that which God has made it to be. Hallelujah. So, I want you to get your bread, get your wine, your fruit wine, get your oil, call your family, call your wife, your children, your house help. Let them sit down with you and let's take this Holy Communion together. It is for you, it is for me. It is for your husband, your wife, your children. Get them all together. You know, it is the Lord's table, not mine. It is the Lord's table. That is why everyone has the right to participate. If you have given your life to Christ. And if you have not, this is an opportunity for you to say, Father, I don't know uh, about it, but I want to believe you for myself. I want to believe you because you are the God that they are talking about. I believe that Jesus came. He died at the cross of Calvary for me and for everyone. Father, I believe you. I believe your word. I believe that when you died, I died. When you were buried, I was buried. When you rose from the grave, I also rose with you. And when you say that, Father, I thank you. My sins are gone. My sins are washed away. I am I'm saved. I believe you. I am free because you have made me free. You have set me free because my sins are no longer there. Hallelujah. That's all you need. And if you are saved, glory be to God. Celebrate with us because it is a time of celebration for the table that have been set for you and I. The Bible said here in Luke 22, Verse 19, it says here, and he took the bread. This is the bread. The Bible said bread. That's why I believe and I will use bread, not biscuits. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it. This is the bread. Father, I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you all because this is another opportunity for us to partake in the Holy Communion. This is bread. We are thanking you. As we take it, O oh God, it shall be healing. It shall be food. It shall, it shall be all that we need from you. That is it, O oh God. And I thank you for this bread. As we partake of it, you said here, and he took the bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you and do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. We are doing this today again. One to do it as a remembrance of what Jesus did for us at the cross of Calvary. Two, we are taking it, we are celebrating because we are no longer in sin. He has taken away our sin and he has given us the joy of life. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Then verse 20 says, and likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. He took the cup. He took it and said, hey, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shared for you. Hallelujah. This is the cup. He gave thanks as well. Father, we thank you for this cup of blessing. It is a cup of blessing. Lord, we are blessed because 
we are we are taking this we are blessed today oh god because it's an opportunity for us your word declares the cup of blessing if you call this the cup of blessing the enemy cannot call it the cup of sorrow the cup of lamentation it is the cup of blessing so are you ready to take the bread the meal that heals he said i'm going to cut it this is the bread and i have some ministers with me here they are all sitting around and i'm going to take mine the bible said and he took the bread and gave thanks we have given thanks oh god i have given it to them and he said take it ye all of it hallelujah mm. be in the mood of prayers and i want you to focus your attention on the lord jesus christ and i want you to ask him whatever you need because the table is set the table is set before you right now it is you and jesus on the table focus your attention on him straight look at his eyes and say jesus this is what i want i want healing on my head i want healing on my chest i want healing on my stomach i want healing on my back i want healing on my legs because by your stripes the word of god said i am healed and so i'm focusing my attention to you right now jesus i lift my hands before you i ask that you by yourself give me a touch that makes a difference in the name of jesus healing is from you I tap at it. Your word declares that healing is the children's bread. And as your child, I have every right. It is my creative right. It is my redemptive right. It is my covenant right. So I tap at it and I receive healing from you right now into my body. in the name of Jesus amen the bible said in that same vein he took the cup he took the cup and he gave thanks father as we drink your blood i ask oh god that it will perform miracles on the inside of us i decree and i declare it so in the name of jesus he took and for the ministers around me drink ye all of it Now that you have taken the bread and the wine that has just symbols you have taken them in and you are thanking God for an opportunity again you are focusing your attention on him because he is for you I want you to bow your heads and I want to command the blessing of holy communion on you our god and our father we want to thank you for this day that has come to pass we want to thank you oh god for this holy communion that we have taken you said do this in remembrance of me remember you for what for the suffering that you did for us Remember you O oh God about the sin that you took away from us. We we'll remember O oh God how 39 lashes were given unto you. 
Mm -hmm. No wonder the Bible said, Isaiah said, by my stripes, ye were healed. Father, we remember those stripes today. And I decree and I declare from the head to the souls of everyone that has partaken of this Holy Communion. If there was disease in their body, if there was pain in their body, if there was malady in them, I decree and I declare that what you did at the cross of Calvary becomes, oh God, relevant in their life right now. Their healing, oh God, is now. I decree and I declare it so. Pain on the head. I decree every pain, every headache, every tumor by the authority vested on me. I decree every tumor gone. Pain in the head gone. Pain in the eyes and the nose. Wherever you are, in the mouth, in your neck, in your throat, and on your breast, on your chest, I decree and I declare, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed. I decree it so because the word of God says so. And I thank you, everlasting Father, for healing everyone in the name of Jesus. Pain in the stomach, pain at the waist, pain at the back, on the leg, on the toe. Wherever there is pain in your body, I decree the power of God upon you right now. Be healed. Be healed of the headache. Be healed of any malady. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because your word declares it so. We believe it and it shall be as we have said it. Thank you, Father, for healing us right now. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now take your oil. The Bible said when David was anointed as king, even though he was young, the Bible said, as soon as the oil came upon him, he became another man. Ooh, glory to God. We anoint our heads, O oh God. Put your hand on your oil and anoint your head. And tell God what you want for this month of April. Tell God what you want. Father, anoint my head with this oil. I decree and I declare that every attack of the evil one shall flee from me. The sicknesses and the diseases in April, they shall not come nigh me. They shall not come nigh my children. They shall not come nigh my grandchildren. They cannot come nigh my great-grandchildren. I see them coming. Hallelujah. It shall not come nigh my home. Anoint yourself and tell God what you want. Anointing that breaks every yoke. Every yoke is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Every yoke is broken. Anointing is for movement. Anointing is for healing. Anointing is for signs and wonders. This month, you will do signs and wonders. I decree it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will shine. You will continue to shine because oil has been upon your head. I decree and I declare it upon you in the name of Jesus. Friends, I want you to rejoice that you are alive for an opportunity like this. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. 
An opportunity has come for us to celebrate and to be in, in that which God has commanded for us to do. I decree peace in your home. April, month of peace, month of declaration, month of publishing the word of God. I decree it upon you that you will publish the word of God everywhere you go. Your hands are blessed. Your head is blessed because you have taken the cup of blessing. The blessings of this month shall go with you. It shall be upon your life, your home, in your rising up and in your lying down. In your waking up, the blessings of God shall overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to believe God for this month. Whatever you need, it shall come to you. I decree and I declare it upon you in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.
Papa, Papa, we're there for heaven. He know the fail. I told you, Papa, Mo, Papa, we're there for heaven. Jesus, know the fail. I told you, why, oh, Father? When you did my back, always, Papa, oh, why I go fail? When you did my side, you the wrong things. Cause you promise it when I call, you go answer me. And when trouble comes, you say you go fight for me. For everything you do, I pass it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all I know the whole water for where you there.
nobody else like him. Say, nobody else like him. Don't 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 like him. Nobody else like him. Nobody, nobody, no. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Hey. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Yes. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody, nobody, else. nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody. 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 Nobody.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I have good news for everyone. I have good news for you. What is the good news? Many people have called me and said, ah, Archbishop Margaret, how come we are not on uh, satellite? How come we are not on TV? How come we are not this, we are not, we are not that? But at God's own time, you know, the worldly adage says, God's time is the best. At God's own time, nothing shall by any means stop it. I believe this is God's timing. Guess what? We are now on satellite TV. Free to air, but it's not free. It's free to air. You can view it free, but it's not free under. But anyhow, we can take care of that. God can take care of that through you and me. But I just have this to let you know that we are now on satellite TV. Where you can get us is my TV, free to air, 24 hours. I'm, oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited because it's one of the dreams of the Archbishop, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, before he left. He said, Margaret, one day we will own our own TV. One day we will broadcast on TV 24 hours. 24 years after his departure, we are now on TV 24 hours. I want to let you know that it's celebration for us. It's good news for us and good news for CGMI and all our friends. 
out there that has been asking us. You can sit down now and watch 24 hours. If you want to be watching the Archbishop Benson in the house and messages 24 hours, you can sit down and watch. You want to know what we are doing? Hey, this is the time for you to sit down and watch what we are doing. You want to know what we are doing since Archbishop Bidahosa left for 24 years? This is the time. You sit down and watch. Watch us at BGC, Balm of Gilead City. Watch us at the university, BIU University. Watch us at Faith Mediplex in Uyo, in Bini, and in Abuja. Watch us all, all of us at the churches in different places and also in diaspora. Watch us, watch the children, watch the schools. My goodness, there is so much to tell you. I want you to be excited. Please go to my TV, Free to Air, and sit down and watch what CGMI is all about. CGMI is no longer where we used to be. God has taken us higher. This is the good news I brought to you. Rejoice with us. If you want to be a part of it, we are raising partners. You want to be a part of it, give us a call and you will see the numbers to call on your screen. Please do, do so and the Lord God will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you once again. Hallelujah. Amen. And on our street, a man just moved to that neighborhood. And he had a German shepherd dog. Four feet high from the ground. We just moved to that neighborhood. And the dog, I've never seen Mercedes before. And this dog pursued us. When we are going to the church, he will pursue us half a mile. My wife will say, honey, come on, move, move, move. <laughs> and on that top of the speed, I put my leg on the brake. And the dog didn't know I was going to apply my brake. And hit the head on the bonnet of the car and lost his jaw. And turned around. He the was like, what? 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 And the dog ran and turned back. And the Lord said, next time when devil pursue you, apply your break. Yeah. I but didn't say run from the devil, he shall run from you. Bind him, resist him, and he shall flee from you. When the Bible talks about in him, in whom in Christ when you see these phrases in scripture it's talking about your address when you say Christ is in me it speaks of capacity and ability for I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me when you say I am in Christ it speaks of security protection praise the Lord because if you are in Christ you are covered by him and you cannot be touched praise the Lord the understanding of grace is very important. That word grace is the believer's most important word. It is grace that saved us. It is grace that preserves us. It is grace that enables us. It is grace that gives us the ability to do all that we desire to do. So every believer needs to understand that word grace so that you don't go to his presence looking for pity. We have a high priest that is touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but it is faith that moves him. You don't go about looking for people that will feel sorry for you. Listen, you must move like one who deserves to be blessed. You must talk like one who deserves to be blessed. And the reason is because Jesus paid it all for us. Praise the Lord. Yes, God has done it all, but faith demands that you respond to what God has done. Faith demands action in the direction of grace. Praise the Lord. Faith must be put to action. Faith is not just what you believe. Faith has to do with what you do with what you believe. You must take your faith with you to work on Monday. 
Your job is your platform for the expression of your faith. You must use your job as an opportunity to make Jesus known. Our duty as believers is to make Jesus famous. Everywhere you are, people should be talking about Jesus. Wherever you go, people should be talking about Jesus. You have a platform. If you find it and use it for the purpose of propagation of the gospel, God will take care of what concerns you. Your responsibility is to make him famous. Tell somebody about him. Preach about him. There's nothing he cannot do. You see the things you chase and run about looking for, God will bring them to your doorsteps. You just make Jesus famous. Tell somebody about him this week. Let me just pray for you. My God and my Father, I thank you for every member of CGMI and those that are out there watching us. Loving God, our attention is focused on you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The God that is able to do exceeding our mind. We look up unto you, everlasting Father. We decree and declare that your name alone will be glorified in all that we are passing through. Because Jesus is Lord. We believe on the finished work at Calvary. We believe on the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. We believe on the resurrection in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word declares, lasting Father, to be absent here, this troublesome world, to be absent from this uh, Wahala world, is to be present at the presence of our everlasting Father. We thank you that we have hope. We are not of those, oh God, that have no hope. We have hope in you, and we thank you that in this hope, oh God, we stand on nothing less but the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for us at the cross of Calvary. Comfort each and every one, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and let us stand and focus our attention on him who is able to do exceeding our mind. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you adoration for doing more than what we have asked for. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I have good news for everyone. I have good news for you. What is the good news? Many people have called me and said, ah, Archbishop Margaret, how come we are not on uh, satellite? How come we are not on TV? How come we are not this, we are not, we are not that? But at God's own time, you know, the worldly adage says, God's time is the best. At God's own time, nothing shall by any means stop it. I believe this is God's timing. Guess what? We are now on satellite TV. Free to air, but it's not free. It's free to air. You can view it free, but it's not free under. But anyhow, we can take care of that. God can take care of that through you and me. But I just have this to let you know that we are now on satellite TV. Where you can get us is my TV, free to air, 24 hours. I, oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited because it's one of the dreams of the Archbishop, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, before he left. He said, Margaret, one day we will own our own TV. One day we will broadcast on TV 24 hours. 24 years after his departure, we are now on 
TV 24 hours. I want to let you know that it's celebration for us. It's good news for us and good news for CGMI and all our friends out there that has been asking us. You can sit down now and watch 24 hours. If you want to be watching the Archbishop Benson in the house and messages 24 hours, you can sit down and watch. You want to know what we are doing? Hey, this is the time for you to sit down and watch what we are doing. You want to know what we are doing since Archbishop Idahosa left for 24 years? This is the time. You sit down and watch. Watch us at BGC, Balm of Gilead City. Watch us at the University, BIU University. Watch us at Faith Mediplex in Uyo, in Benin, and in Abuja. Watch us all, all of us at the churches in different places and also in diaspora. Watch us, watch the children, watch the schools. My goodness, there is so much to tell you. I want you to be excited. Please go to my TV, free to air. And sit down and watch what CGMI is all about. CGMI is no longer where we used to be. God has taken us higher. This is the good news I brought to you. Rejoice with us. If you want to be a part of it, we are raising partners. You want to be a part of it, give us a call and you will see the numbers to call on your screen. God is saying to you, He's the Lord who is your healer. He's the Lord who is the one who answers your prayer even before you pray. I put my breath in your lungs so you could live for long. You turn your back and start questioning me from the same mind I created. Who made the fishes in the seas and the sea for the fish? Put some trees in the seas, from seed from a tree, and put a little tree in the seed. But me? Who gave life to every living thing? Flying, crawling, walking, and breathing in the sea? But me? I'm the master of all things. I'm the God who sits above the cycle of the earth. And my inhabitants are like grasshoppers. I stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spread them like a tent to dwell in. I bring the princes to nothing and make the judges of the earth useless.
must come out and show the Christ in us. The Christ in you is not weak. The Christ in you is not a poor person. The Christ in you is not without knowledge. As a matter of fact, Christ is made wisdom unto us. So it says here, arise, shine. If you are going to arise, it means there's light inside of you. It means there's light inside of you. It means there's light inside of you. There's light in you. There is light in you. You shall perform miracles in Jesus' name. People should see you, say, I need prayer. And when you pray for them, the dead will rise up in Jesus' name. It's time for you to emerge. You will emerge. You will emerge stronger in the name of Jesus. You will emerge better in the name of Jesus. This year, I pray for you that when the year ends, you will not be the same as you began in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you this morning that if you need healing, not only will you be healed, but you will come out as a healer in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you that the grace of God upon your life shall open mighty, mighty, mighty doors. That the world shall come to your rising in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you that everything you have asked God for, you will see tenfold in the name of Jesus. When I cannot breathe, fear is on my chest, the weight of the world on me. Everything's crashing down, everything I have known. When I wonder if I'm all alone, I remember. Thinking about your goodness, goodness. I can't stop thinking about. I can't stop thinking about. I can't stop thinking about your goodness, goodness. I can't stop thinking about.
Discover to fulfill purpose. Purpose is what you are wired for. That thing that makes you to be alive, that, that thing that makes you live, that thing that you cannot just sit down and just keep quiet. That thing, you must fulfill it. I said here, purpose is key to destiny. Number one, key to destiny. Purpose is the end that started in the beginning. Number three, purpose is the finished line or is finished before the journey. Number four, purpose is the destination before you started. It is the destination before the journey. <laughs> Number five, purpose is the final address for your life. Is the thing that men will say about you, how you lived your life, how many lives you imparted, who you touched, who you blessed, who you gave hope. But number six, purpose is the reason for being alive. Number seven, Purpose precedes plans. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that what prevails. Number eight, your purpose preserves your life. Number nine, your purpose frees you. Your purpose frees you. May you find your purpose. May you find the purpose of your being alive. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't have Christ, you will have crisis. Jeremiah said this word, he said, It is not of man to direct himself. Unless by the Spirit of God. Bishop Feb gave me a souvenir. When he came to Bayasa, and it is written, the will of God will take you to a place where the grace of God will protect you. God is not sending you to a place to kill you. But he's sending you to a place where he will protect you. Where he will provide for you. The day he sent the 70, when they came back, he said, since you went, are you hungry? God will not send you an assignment. And you are on a course of fulfilling that purpose. He will never put you to shame. Somebody in my church said, God need to do like that. The assignment God has given to you is to touch life. May the Lord endow you with his power. May the Lord bless you as you fulfill your purpose in life. We're going to talk about understanding modern day idolatry so now what is it about idolatry that caused paul to be troubled he was troubled in his heart uh, because he he was in athens and he saw that all of athens was full of idolatry and it troubled him is it possible that we can look at our city and see that the whole city is full of idolatry I'll answer that and say, yeah. Is it possible for us to look at our state and to look at our nation and to look at the world, and I'll go as far as to say, and the whole world is full of idolatry. It says, when you see idolatry, flee from it. Get away from it. So what is it about idolatry? Greater than God. There are more people that don't believe in God today than ever before. 
Why? Because there's been a whole lot of ministry malpractice in the pulpit. When you look at a Christian, you don't want to be like them because we've deceived the world into thinking that Christianity is perfection. When they don't see it, they think something wrong with your thing. But you got to start telling the truth. Christianity is not perfection. Christianity is a person who sees God as my source for everything. And even when I'm messed up, he's still my source. Christianity is not beating somebody down because they failed to reach perfection. You, God didn't make you perfect. You, you, you put it out there. I'm flawless. So when you fail, people are like, there must not be anything to your thing. That's not the truth. If we were flawless, we wouldn't need God. If we were perfect, we wouldn't need Jesus. I don't then you can just, when they see you right now, they think, you ain't like what you used to be. You say, this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Amen? Maturity says, no matter what's going on in my life, I, I reach for Jesus every time. Immaturity is, is when you're, you've made something else your source or yourself your source. When something happens, you don't go to, for Jesus. When something happens, you don't reach for him. He's my source. That's a mature Christian. You're not mature because you've been saved a long time. You're not mature because you can pretend to be spiritually mature because every time you get around somebody, you, you, you act, you know, kind of a fake, fake spiritual. You know, hey, brother, how are you? Oh, ho ho hallelujah. That don't do nothing to me. I don't care how you act at church, and I don't care all that little jerking around you do. They ain't done right there and do nothing for me. I want to know when hell breaks out in your life, who do you reach for? Yeah. Hallelujah. During the pandemic, who did you reach for? I'm reaching for Jesus. You wouldn't believe the number of people that got divorced in the pandemic, the number of the people who have got molested in the pandemic, the number of people who got beat up in the pandemic, because God wasn't their source. And the distractions that they had from their reality showed up because God wasn't their source. But when God's your source and you reach for him, you reach for him when you're broke, busted, and disgusted. You reach for him when they diagnose you with a disease. You reach for him when you've been hurt, when you've been broken. You reach for him. That's the sign of a mature Christian. Who told you you cannot fulfill purpose? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which voice did you hear? Who told you? Adam had failed, messed up, but God called him. Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice. I hid myself with my wife because I was naked. He kept himself out of purpose. He could not fulfill purpose because he hid himself and the wife. Some of you have heard strange voices. Who told you that that sickness is unto death? Who told you you cannot be promoted? Who told you you cannot be married? Who told you you cannot be pregnant? Who told you you cannot pass your exam? Who told you you cannot be healed? Who told you that you cannot be better than you are now? Who told you that you are condemned forever? Who told you that you cannot travel abroad? Who told you? It takes a clotted man to cover the nakedness of others. A naked man is a frustrated man. A naked man cannot dress the garden. A naked man cannot keep the garden. A naked man cannot fulfill or discover purpose. A naked man cannot clot the naked. Only a clotted man can clot the naked. And so God said, who told you you were naked? A naked man cannot minister to the needs of others. A naked man cannot clog the nakedness of society. We have value systems that are naked. We have men that are outcasts. They cannot clog them because they are naked. A naked man cannot feed the hungry. He has to be clothed himself. And God said, who told you? Do you know after that experience, Adam never said again he was naked. Because God brought the cloth and covered him and brought him out. The reason why they did not employ you last time is because you were naked. But now there is a new beginning. Devil is still looking for men who are what? Naked. But God has overthrown him, covered his own. So when he sees you, he cannot see you because you are not covered by the precious blood of the Lamb. There is a new you. There is a new you. Clotted them with a fabric that the devil have no understanding. 
the wind bloweth where it lifted. Thou heareth the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh or where it goeth. So is every man that is covered by the presence of the Most High God. I declare celebrations for you. I declare celebrations for you. I declare celebration for you. There are many factors in life, but don't joke with the factor God has initiated. I don't know where you are, but I believe that we are now in God's presence at the hour of prayer. And whatever be the challenge, whatever be the situation, whatever it is that won't let you be, you need to focus without distraction. You know, the enemy of focus is distraction. If you refuse to be distracted, I can promise you that with God, all things are possible. Your story will change tonight. We can argue about anything, but we cannot argue about results. You cannot argue with testimony. This mega come this year must produce your testimony in the name of Jesus. Whether you like it or not, as you focus your heart to Christ my Savior, a transformation is coming upon you. A testimony you will never forget in a hurry. If your hand is still with you, lift it up and shout hallelujah. If the devil could not stop Jesus from rising from the dead, he can't stop the believer from being anything. Somebody say amen. And if you're going to fulfill purpose, you must, these three things must be in place. Identity, provision, power. Now before I married her, I was already mama's son, like many of us, son, son, we're all sons and daughters of mama. But then she called me when I married Frida and said to me, do you see my son Feb? I say yes, mommy. Do you see my son, my daughter Ruth? I say yes, mommy. You see my daughter Daisy? I say you see my my daughter Freda, your wife. I say yes, mommy. I say okay, listen now. I say from today, you are my son like they are. Understand it. You have their privileges. You have their rights. He said, watch them where they sit. Go and sit there. He said, when you come to my house, don't behave like a visitor. Behave like an owner. She was educating me on sonship. Somebody say amen. The same way, listen to this. The same way, when you two put your faith in Jesus, God called you. He said, look at my son Jesus. As he is to me, so you are to me. All that he has, you have. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying tonight? All that he has, you have. What he has power over, you have power over. You have become a co-administrator with him. As all things are under him, all things are under you too. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you hear, say, I hear. When you look at Jesus, you will see that nobody has a right to tell you you are naked. Nobody. Is Jesus naked? No. Are you? No. Stagnant. Is he stagnant? No. Then I'm not stuck. What he is, I, what is not, I am not. I'm connected to God's unlimited supply. I have a sense of abundance. I have a sense of lack. I have a sense of lack. I have a sense of abundance. I know who my daddy is. Somebody rejoice in this house. Um, may each one of us live here with the grace to carry his presence perpetually. And may that presence come to make all the difference in every step that we take. Nothing makes a difference like his presence. The purpose of a product is determined in the factory, not in the market. The shoe you are wearing may cost 10 times the price of a tie, but you can't do the job of a tie. The ring on your finger may cost 100 times more than the cost of your pair of shoes, but you can't wear it. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. I ordained thee and I separated thee to be a prophet. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. So before we were born, he knew us. And he separated us to a particular purpose in life. Therefore, purpose is to be discovered, not to be determined. Purpose is to be discovered, 
are not to be determined. There's a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It's important for us to know that most of us are swimming against the tide because we don't know the plan and purpose of God. We're living our life to chance. And living your life to chance, you don't have a chance. You'll be going from pillar to post, you won't know where you're going. Without a vision, a discovery of purpose, the people perish. They are stripped of honor, stripped of dignity, they become empty. Never mistake opportunity for destiny. They are not the same. There is no extraordinary person anywhere. It is the backing of the extraordinary God that makes an ordinary man look extra extraordinary. Don't miss his backing. You don't have a future if you do. Settle down and ask. Young people, I'm very particular about you. Settle down to locate God's plan for your life. I mean, it will be celebration all the way. If your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. No life fear will be stagnated again. Yeah. In your business, you will never be stagnated again. Yeah. In your career, you will never be stagnated again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. No one can discover purpose in darkness. He that walks in darkness does not know where he goes so he stumbles on everything until you are born again you are not in God's agenda neither can you discover it so our fulfillment in life as believers lies in working in God's purpose for our lives don't let people lead you don't lead yourself allow God to lead you allow God to lead you he never leads backward he always leads forward allow God to lead you and no gate can stop you when God is leading you when God leads he supplies the light to walk the path when God leads he supplies the light to walk the path little by little step by step into our promised land allow him to lead you he knows better than you and I. He knows the end from the beginning. We can't run this race on our own. We don't know what tomorrow holds. He knows everything about tomorrow. When God's kingdom feeds your heart, life becomes so fulfilling, so enriching, so empowering. You are going places. You are going places. The Bible, the word of God, he was saying that the truth revealed in it do not have human origin. They don't come from man, but they come from God himself, the word of God. So we have two things here about the Bible. Number one, it has no human origin. It doesn't come from man. It's the word of God. It comes from the Lord. Number two, it's eternal clearly stating that the Bible is not the product of time. That's what David says. It is eternal. It contains the eternal mind of God. It contains the eternal counsel of God. When time and the world will pass away, the mind and the counsel of God revealed through scripture will stand forever when he was tempted he answered every temptation with scripture he did not answer the temptation with experience with the word he answered with the word so when the devil came and said you cannot resist Satan and defeat Satan with experience no matter how how real the experience is only the word of God can defeat the enemy. And now we as God's people need to know it, live it, love it, walk it. Hallelujah. Can you say, we say purpose in my hands. Purpose is the reason why something exists. The reason why your hands are there is because God has a purpose for your hands. Now let's go back to Christ because Christ's purpose is the reason for which we are brought into the kingdom. The Bible is talking about how sin 
separates or sin destroys, sin removes. For this purpose, which means for this reason, the Son of God was manifested that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. So there's a reason why he was made known to us, so he would destroy the work of the devil. Now, to destroy the work of the devil means to undo the work which the devil came to do. God is here and man is here and there's a separation because God cannot be where sin is. However, when God sees that there is a separation between himself and man, God puts Jesus onto the earth, correct? His purpose from the beginning was to undo. It was not a second thought. It was not that maybe God saw that there was sin and God shouted, Jesus! At the cross, he thinks he's about to win his greatest victory. He thinks that by killing Jesus, he will defeat Christ once and for all. Not knowing that God had a plan to defeat him once and for all. So he takes Jesus Christ to the cross, takes one hand of Jesus Christ, puts it here, and he nails it. Takes the other hand, and he nails it. And now he thinks he has won a victory. But by putting Christ on the cross, he has put one hand on man. One hand on God. And he thought he had won the victory. So he's rejoicing. Not knowing that he had connected the God of creation to the man whom he had been separated from. Purpose in your hands. At his death, he said three words. It is finished. He didn't say, I am finished. He didn't say, you are finished. No, he said, it is finished. What was finished? The purpose for which he came had been accomplished. What was finished? Every sickness that you bring because of the blood that came from his head, from his waist, from his back, from his hands. That blood came to set you free from sickness. So therefore, your sickness is finished. Doctors will tell you what we know, what we learned in school. All right? Here's what faith does. Faith does not deny facts. Faith supersedes facts. So faith will see a fact that a man is dead. And faith will say, Lazarus, come forth. So despite the fact that what is there is there, faith says, come back to life. Why? Because of this blood that was shed, that came out through his hands. There is purpose in these hands. Where does Jesus live? Therefore, if the fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus, and Jesus is in you, you have the power to save. You have the power to heal. You have the power to reverse every curse of the devil. You have the power to say, Satan, not in my life. Devil, you have no new tricks. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested to undo the work of the devil and to do the work of the Father. So these hands have purpose. God put all his power in the hands of Jesus. And the power in the hands of Jesus is now in your hands. So now if you understand this, it's no longer what God cannot do does not exist. Why? Because God is in Christ and Christ is in you. So now it is what I cannot do does not exist. I can do how many things? All things through Christ who strengthens me. Is there purpose in your hands now? Can you do all things? Is there anything you can't do now? 
What I cannot do not exist. Not by my power. Not by my might. But by the spirit of the living God. Three things to ask before you say I do. How do I know she's the one? I love you. True or false? Red flags, yellow flags, green flags, blue flags. Who needs flags? How safe is internet dating? Who has the final say? Finances and other mood killers. When is the right time to propose? Who's the best person for you? A or B? What are your love languages? Tune into the eligibles and find out the answers to all these questions with me, Frida. See you soon. Bishop had declared the month of April to be a month to focus on Christ for a peaceful and a joyful home. And the theme of the year 2022 remains focus on Christ for anointing for increase. Hello, I am Ajig Elizabeth. Welcome to the News Hour. CGMI Global Communion and Anointing Service with the Archbishop, Archbishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, is coming up on the 1st of April 2022 at 6 a.m. prompt. You can join live on CGMI Ibu TV free to air satellite on the My TV orbit. The service will be streamed live on YouTube at Ibu TV, on Facebook at Dr. Margaret Benson Idahosa, and also on the Church of God Mission Facebook page. A rebroadcast would be by 6 p.m. prompt, same day, and would be available on all mentioned platforms. Christian Youth Fellowship CYF would be holding a public speaking masterclass at the Avenue, number 4 Fateway of Obadiswa Road, GRA Benin City. Date is on Sunday, 3rd April 2022, by 12 p.m. Anchored by Reverend Chisom and Reverend Shalom Gar. Do not miss out. All Nations for Christ Bible Institute International is now offering prehistory program for a duration of three years in Christian theology, which includes theological research, charismatic and Pentecostal studies, African theology and others. Missiology includes cross-cultural communication, world mission, slash evangelization, Ecclesiology ETC. Doctor of Ministry includes management and operations of ministry in Nigeria, pastoral ministry, biblical and theological basic of Christian ministry ETC. Interested persons are to apply to www.anfcbii.sch.ng or call 0806-623-0710 or 0706-047-2594 for further inquiries. During Fit Arena's last Sunday service, Rev. Terry Hudson Akio admonished the church on making Jesus famous. He said that faith is not what you believe, but that which you do with what you believe, as faith demands action in the direction of grace. And everything around you, either big or little, is not for your bodily profit alone. But making Jesus famous is our ultimate responsibility. 
Your job is your platform for the expression of your faith. You must use your job as an opportunity to make Jesus known. Our duty as believers is to make Jesus famous. Everywhere you are, people should be talking about Jesus. Wherever you go, people should be talking about Jesus. Get the full message on DVD and Evil Media Sales Outlet at number one Fateway, GRA Benin City. Also available on our YouTube channel at Ewo TV. Jump Summit 2022 is at the corner and this year's theme is Focus. Venue is at Convocation Arena, River State University, Port Harcourt. Date is 12 to 17th April. Registration is open for 2,000 Naira only and you can register at www.cfireal.org slash jam summit www.cfireal.org slash jam summit Communities and individuals are still enjoying and benefiting from the million out of kindness. CGMI, KT Texas and all the bishopric and zones are still relieving the ultimate legacy of showing love and spreading the word. CGMI Glory Church, Roland Chapel, celebrated family Thanksgiving last Sunday. The senior pastor, Reverend Professor Mark Ehili, preached on the effect of Thanksgiving. He said that the oneness of God dwells with men, if all can make gratitude a habit. That God created you deliberately and he is an awareness of all you need. All you need do is come to him in Thanksgiving. PH for Christ Crusade at CGMI Borough Creek Bishopric Headquarters is coming soon from the 3rd to the 10th of April 2022 at Upe Soundfield area, Port Harcourt, River State. The morning devotional service holds at 6 a.m. at the Faith Miracle Center Church Auditorium daily. Endeavor to join the early risers so you can enjoy bountiful habits of blessings because our today's quote of the week says, don't be afraid to ask God for big things because blessing you will not reduce his capacity. The Archbishop wishes to inform the general public that some persons are impersonating her social media and identity with fake Facebook accounts and other social media platforms. Kindly beware of such accounts and block them immediately as Mama would not write anybody to solicit for any form of donation or whatsoever. Our original Facebook handle name is Dr. Margaret E. Benson Dash Idahosa. Beware and also inform others on the comment section of such handles before blocking and reporting it.
International Director for the Christian Youth Fellowship, the Global Youth Ministry of Church of God Mission International. Permit me to take the singular honor and a very rare well privilege on behalf of the Archbishop of Church of God Mission to announce our forthcoming International Youth Summit 2022. This summit is designed to stimulate excellence by creating a mental stretch environment for every participant for increase in productivity. The theme of this conference is transcend which means to rise above, go beyond, and overpass. It also means to surpass or exceed beyond excellence. All of this will be made possible by the elixir of the anointing, which is the fullness, the total and complete embodiment of the power of the anointing, which has so come upon every participant of the conference via direct impartation by our Lord spiritual. And this is so dope with the theme of our coming year anointing for increase the date of this conference again is 9th to the 14th of august 2022 and the venue will be at bank of gilead city amazingly this conference shall be hosted by our very own his majestic grace margaret benson Idahosa, the archbishop of church of god mission international this is going to be an experience like never before. It's going to feature an array of the ministration of the world, impartation, music, advantage sessions, and many more. I guarantee you that this is something much better than the Nigerian Jollof Rice, and you don't want to miss it. I will be there, and I believe you will be there too. Together, we transcend. See you there. Green flags, blue flags. Who needs flags? How safe is internet dating? Who has the final say? Finances and other mood killers. When is the right time to propose? Who's the best person for you? A or B? What are your love languages? Tune into the eligibles and find out the answers to all these questions with me, Frida. See you soon. You are watching Evo TV News Live. Thank you for staying tuned. Do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media platforms. I am Ajigo Elizabeth. Bye for now. Hello there. Welcome to the Above Only Devotional Broadcast. Above Only Devotional is created by Archbishop Margaret Benson Ada Hosa and brought to you by Church of God Mission International. It is our prayer that as you study God's word with us today, your life will not remain the same again. We believe you are going to experience the unstoppable, glorious, and above only life that Jesus died for you to live. Happy viewing. Today is the first of April 2022. I'm glad to be alive. But I don't know about you. I'm sure you're glad to be alive. And our above only devotion for today says, Are you growing spiritually? Are you growing spiritually? Our text is Hebrews 5, verse 12 to 14. 
First Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that won't teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. When the Bible says you ought to be teachers, it is also saying that by now you ought to know and be practicing the things of God such that you can show and teach it to others, not just with your words, but with your example. In Acts chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible speaks of the things Jesus began both to do and to teach. God wants us to teach his words that we are practicing. Being able to teach without being able to practice the things of God is not God's will for our lives. God wants us to know and practice his ways first before we teach them to others. Beyond just going to church, you should be growing in your knowing and exercising God's ways. Our knowledge and practice of the revelation of Christ helps us to grow spiritually. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, Acts chapter 20, verse 32, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. For Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life of God. When growing children eat, the foods they eat and absorb into their bodies cause them to grow and to mature. As they mature, they are able to advance to eating more solid foods, and they keep growing and are able to live and function well. As we grow by receiving and practicing the revelation of Christ and engaging in spiritual exercises, we get deeper in our understanding of God and the life of Christ, and we are able to receive even deeper truths, revelations, and understanding of the revelation of Christ. We increase our capacity to function like Christ. Spiritual maturity is measured by Christ's likeness. Spiritual maturity is measured by Christ's likeness. As we grow spiritually, we increase in discernment and our chances of being deceived also reduces. Do not stop learning and practicing the revelation of Christ because of pleasure or trying times. Keep growing all the time. Keep growing all the time because growing can never stop. We never stop growing. As we keep learning, we keep growing. As we keep learning the word of God, we become the image of Christ. Because as we picture in the image of Christ, we become the person we see by the help of the Holy Spirit. So our prayer today says, Heavenly Father, I desire to grow spiritually and become more like Christ every day. Help me to learn and practice the revelation of Christ more. Amen. Hello there. This is how to download the Above Only devotional app. First, make sure you are online. Then, go to Play Store on your device. Type Above Only devotional offline. Search for the app with the smallest logo. Download the app and click register. Fill your details, your surname, your name, your phone number, your email address, and your password. 
you will then be taken to a new page that features the content. Click on it and it will request for your payment of 1000 Naira yearly subscription. Click transfer and the account details will pop up or click on debit or credit and fill your card details such as your card number, expiration date and your CVV number which is the last three digits at the back of your card. Send it and you'll be automatically activated. You can also do bulk registration for your family members, your friends or your children. All you have to do is to pay into our account which is CGM Daily Devotional 101-910-7762 UBA. You can also call 070-443-435-93. Thank you for joining us today on our Above Only Devotional Broadcast. We know you have been blessed. Please share your testimonies with us. And also, join us again tomorrow for another wonderful edition. Also, do not forget to click on the subscribe button at the bottom of this screen. We believe that God's word you have received today will profit you and it will produce great fruit in your life. Thank you, God bless you, and remain above only. My ban is full. My ban is full. It's full for you. My ban is full. It's full for you. Take as much. Take as much. Your need. Take as much. Even now. Hallelujah. Mm. Whatever is your need, God is telling you tonight that his ban is full. Not full for him, but full for you. So you can take as much as you want. It will not depreciate your father. What is your need? What, what, what do you want? What do you want tonight? Healing is in the barn. Ah! Healing is in the barn. 
is in the barn. Prosperity is in the barn. Babies are in the barn. Name it. Promotion is in the barn. Take what you want. There is water in the barn. Yes, 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 yes. Just take what you want. Healing is there. Abracada de secondere de hatutomoria. Yes, 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 yes. There is healing going on. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank Jesus. You, Jesus thank you, for your Jesus. spirit moving. Thank you, Father. Lera Muda Basanta. Shaya Moko Rinda. He Mashanda. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just be quiet in his presence. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. Yes, Father. Yes. 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 Oh, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is a woman here. You are here with X-ray. You brought X-ray from the doctor. You say you are coming to give it to Jesus. X-ray. X-ray. You brought X-ray. You know the, that photo? Where nobody fit read now, only doctor they read them. You bring her with you. You say, I don't know the thing where doctor me, but Jesus know the meaning. You brought it here. I have good news for you. God say He has healed that disease. You have, God is telling me to tell you that that disease is healed. You did not bring that astray to man. You brought it to Jesus. And Jesus is here. And he has healed you. Take your astray back. 
Tell the doctor, examine me again. Examine me again, and you will see the result. Jesus has healed you. Let her come, let her come. your hands towards her. That which Christ has done, no man cannot do it. Amen. X-ray, I didn't know. The Spirit of the Lord said it. That's the X-ray. This is another one here. An ultrasound. An ultrasound. I don't know. I, haven't know, I don't know them from Adam. But Jesus knows them. Amen. I say Jesus knows them. Amen. He knows you more than you know yourself. That is why you are here. If Jesus can heal an x-ray and also an ultrasound of this woman. Le brigando sicatati. Braga de Zandorobo. I have tasted of your love. What is that? Jesus, you are a great God. In different ways, I have tasted of your love. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are a great Stretch your hands here. This is spiritual. It is not man, it's spiritual. And the God that is spiritual is here to heal, to set free, to deliver. He's here. Thank you, Jesus. We set this one free. Yes, Lord. Baby. Yes. Stay right. Yes. Amen. Turn. Yes. Amen. And be straight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every bridge, whatever caused the bridge of the baby, we destroy it and we command. Baby, turn to the right way. Move your head down to the right place and come down at the time of God. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Lord Jesus. for safe delivery. Yes. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Lord. for safe delivery. Amen. Thank you, Father, for safe delivery. Amen. Safe delivery. Amen. Woo, glory! It's done. It's done. Labos and Which is this? This is S three two. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Rabo Satala. Render the Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Cancer have been healed. Ooh. Prostate cancer has been healed. Tonight, you are healed. Amen. Jesus says, I have come to heal. Yes. I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. Yafu Yafu life. Amen. Of backward life. That is what Christ has come. And he is here tonight to do you good. Amen. Mm. He said, My barn is full. It is full. It is full for you. And I can see angels distributing gifts. Oh yes. Angels are distributing gifts. Grab yours. Grab yours. There are two men here. I know there are many men that has it. But two in particular you are really, really worried about your home, you are worried about your family. God is telling me to tell you. The lowest, lowest per count that the doctor says you have, Jesus has revealed it with his blood. Amen. You have just been told by the doctor. And you said, whatever it is, let me go to Mega Com. Let me go to Balm of Gilead. This Balm of Gilead is a miracle ground. I want to assure those two men. I know there are some other men here that has the same problem. But these two particular men, you know yourself. You know yourself. God is telling me to tell you, set your worry apart. Take your worry away. Cast your worries on him, for he cares for you. Cast it upon him. Cast it upon him. He's able to do, he's able to do exceeding your mind, exceeding your imagination. Believe on him. He say he has healed you. And I want you to go back to your doctor and say, Doctor, God has healed me. Test me again. He will tell you your sperm count is enough to produce children. You believe that? Grab it and take it home. It is for you. It is for you. Mm, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Fallopian too. Rachel! Who is Rachel here? Your fallopian tube is are opened. Amen. I say your fallopian tubes are open. Amen. Whatever is blocking the tube is gone. Amen. Your name is Rachel. I don't know you, but God knows you. Amen. You'll be crying in the secret. You'll be crying in the secret. Ah, come, 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 come. Okay, stand up. Oh, your 
Rachel, please, mom. Her name is Rachel. What's your name? Rachel. What's your name? Rachel. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, look at me. Don't cry. Look at me. God, Jesus tell, has told me to tell you that those fallopian tubes, they are open. Amen. You will have your children. Amen. And you will come here with your children to testify in the name of Jesus Christ. So your name Rachel too. Your name is Rachel. All right. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Tubes are open. Rachel, Rachel. Hallelujah. all the bishops to come out. Bishops come out. There is a woman here. The child is in the hospital on oxygen. But she is here at the convention. She is here at the convention believing that my needs will be met. My daughter will be taken out of oxygen. We believe that Christ can do it. That is why you are here. So stretch your hand towards them, towards her here, Hallelujah. and command that oxygen to be off. Now! Amen. Now! Now! In the name of Jesus. La brigada baboze ketele. Ira la la boza ya la la bahaka. You are healed. Tina, you are healed. Amen. Tina, you are healed. Amen. You are set free. Amen. We apply the blood of Jesus. Into your body now. Receive the blood of the Lamb. Receive the breath of God. Receive the breath of God. You are healed. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. It is done. Thank you. It is done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There are some of you here. You say something is running in your body. From, from your head. It go there, it go there here. When you are not here, it go run here. Or it go go down. Or it go go up. If you are here, run here. Something is rolling in your body, moving in your body. Please run rush out now. now. Something moves in your body. There's a movement around your body. Please come out now. Mama wants to lay hands on you. Protocol, please help us. Just, just form a line, form a straight line this way. 
Something moves in your just stand, don't kneel, oh, just stand. Oh, no. I didn't say you should kneel down. Don't kneel, don't kneel, stand from a straight line. Protocol help us. Protocol help us. Move back a little. Move, move back a, a little. Straight line. Something move, moves in move your body. Move back a little. There's so movement in your have, body. I can have a, a place to park. There's movement in your body. Movement ah, in your body. Movement in your body. Movement in your body. It goes, it goes there your head. Oh, there, there are some of you here with headache. Three o'clock every night. It's as if they are laying something on your head. Boy, boy, boy. That boy, boy is gone. Amen. Amen. The enemy will not visit you tonight. Amen. And forever. Amen. Because you are a child of the kingdom. Amen. Because he died for you at the cross of Calvary. Amen. We decree and declare every headache at night be gone. Amen. Get out. Amen. Be out. Amen. And that thing running in your body like warm. You go be like say you want shit and come out, but you go go shit, you not go come out. Tonight, that worm is dead. Amen. It is dead. Amen. Nothing will run now your body anymore. Amen. We decree and declare it so. Yes. It is gone now. Amen. It is gone now. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, amongst you that came, there is... There's someone that has pain on the pelvic. Pelvic. Your pelvis around your waist area. Ahead. Yes, pain around your waist yes, area. Yes, yes, pain yes. Pain around your pelvic area, your waist area, around your waist region. It was caused because of accident. Caused by an accident. Yes, you Are you the one? That you fell. Caused by an accident? Yes. All right. She's Where is the one? She's here. Look at her. Okay. You two had accident? Accident, pelvic area. Okay, please stand. Just to block it. Believe where you are. Receive where you are. Where she's, as she's praying for somebody, believe and receive. Just receive right now. Wherever you are standing, receive. As she's praying for one person, receive your healing. As she's praying for one person, receive your healing. Now check that your waist area. Bend down, check. Your pelvis is healed. Your pelvic is healed. Your pelvis is healed. Check it. That pelvic area is healed. Check it. You have received healing. If you have received healing, check it. Let's see what God has done for you. I just pray for one person. Receive your healing where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. For he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. The judgment of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our sins. Who forgives all our sins. Who heals all our diseases. If he forgives all our sins, he heals all our diseases. Hallelujah. Your pelvis is healed. Your pelvis is healed. As she laid us on one person, it is okay. You are healed. That prayer has reached all of you. Receive your healing. Receive in the your name healing. of Jesus Christ. Believe. Yes. Believe that it is done. Yes. Believe you are healed. Yes. Everything that the enemy has brought on you tonight, it has been healed. Amen. You are healed and Amen. set free. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your healing. Yes, Jesus. Now, I want you to sing and dance and rejoice. Pastor Peace, there only you can do. Only you can do. Now, now begin to what rejoice no for your healing. Begin to rejoice Jehovah. for your healing. Oh, don't sing, go, don't sing, sing, your feet. Rejoice for your healing. Rejoice. Rejoice for your healing. Rejoice for your healing. Only you can do. What no man can do, Jehovah.
said, Lazarus, come forth, come forth. Just like you heal the sick and you raise the dead. Jesus, you are doing the same. Healing everywhere. a miracle here. Who remembers yesterday when I prayed for a woman whose son was on oxygen? Though whose daughter was on oxygen? Good news, the oxygen has been removed. The child is well now. Somebody oh! give a shout of praise today. This is a miracle. Our child was on healed. oxygen. We prayed yesterday. Mama prayed. The you child is healed. healed now. You are Hallelujah. Healed. Glory to you God. Keep receiving miracles. Keep receiving healings in your body. Keep receiving. Keep receiving. The healed. power. Keep receiving. Hold that child well. Say, keep you receiving. are doing the same today. Keep receiving. You are doing the same today. 